Happy new comic book day, webheads, guys. Yes, it's Christmas week. It's right around the corner. I just want to take this minute before I get to the shop to say happy holidays. Enjoy your Christmas. Be safe. And hopefully you guys get everything that you want this holiday season. Guys, I'll be back in a minute to show you what I picked up at the shop. Hey, all my webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, I am your host, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you Spider Slayer's Comic Book Call. Fans, this is episode 507 or 8. I don't know, I'm just super excited about this week's haul and I can't wait to share with it with you guys. Guys, this is the video series where each and every week I share with you what I pick up at the comic book store, which is Comic Central, located in the city of Sanford, right? So if you guys are ever in the Central Florida area, go ahead, stop by, tell my Spider Slayer sent you. You won't be disappointed with the shop. They're a great place to go to. They got some awesome comic books. So guys, before we jump into this, I just want to make a quick mention to the sponsor of MutantBeaverComics.com. Guys, go ahead and check them out over there. They got over a thousand exclusive comic book covers. They provide the best shipping. Let me tell you, because I recently got a package from them and it is phenomenal. They got beautiful covers. And if you enter the promo code CORNER10, you can save 10% off of your order and future orders after that. So that's MutantBeaverComics.com. Guys, go check them out. All right, here we go. Mysterious Black Bag is now full in effect, right? The comics are inside. We're going to take them out. I got a solid haul for you guys this week. Here we go. Should I show you the old books first or the new books? Let's go with the old books. Oh boy, here we go. You're going to love this. So, of course, we got the all-important bags and boards. All right, that puts a little base so I can put the comics on here. Let me get the new books out of the way. So, we got some new ones right there. So, there's the new ones. And then, we have a nice little stack of old ones. And here we go. So, the first things first is... I want to say happy holidays to you all, and this does get you in the holiday spirit because I got the Marvel Holiday Special Issue 1. Uh, mainly bought this for, oh, a crappy glare, for the cover. I thought this cover was absolutely awesome as you get to see some of your favorite Marvel heroes on there. So I was like, cool. I never earned or saw this holiday special before, and I was like, yeah, why not pick it up? So... Yeah, cool stuff made back in 1991. All right, so you guys know how I was collecting the Eternals, right? And I had issues one through 16, needed 17, 18, 19, and the annual. Well, my shop delivered, wound up getting issue 17, and I wound up getting issue 18. All right. And these books are all in really high grade. And I wound up getting issue 19. And then I wound up getting the annual, which this one's maybe not in the best grade, but I have it. So I have the complete first volume. Now I know Eternals didn't do well in the box office. So a lot of these issues are not gonna have high demand or high value anymore until maybe they make a reappearance. But at least now I do have the whole complete run. So if any, if I wanted to sell it in the future, you know, someone would say, oh yeah, you got at least the first run, right? But fuck all that, excuse the language. Who cares about the Eternals? Because this next book that I'm showing you is probably the most important key book that I own I would say when it comes to Silver Age books, right? And this one is The Amazing Spider-Man issue 17. This is the lowest issue number that I own now. This is the second appearance of the Green Goblin. That's right, my shop has issue 17. I pulled the trigger on it, right? I was able to afford this one with some store credit and just, you know, 
just some luck, right? So I got it for a good price and I and I scored it and I'm just so grateful to actually have this book in my Spider-Man collection. Second appearance of Green Goblin. So, so cool and it's a Human Torch crossover. So that is great. I am so excited to have this. This like totally made my day. Man, oh man, that's awesome. So, so good. All right. So now let's go into the main covers, or the main comics. First things first, issue 87 of Nightwing. This is supposed to be one of the issues where it's like one continuous like poster, I guess. That's what this is. Yeah, like, like images like that. And it's so good to see the normal artist on this book once again, because this is going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully this continues the story. Uh, uh, where we last left off. So that's Nightwing issue 87. Next, we got Refrigerator Full of Heads. This is issue three. Uh, the first two issues of this have been really good. This is a biker gang's head that they accidentally, well, I wouldn't say accidentally chopped off, but they did chop off. I love the artwork in this. It's so, ex such as good exaggerated art, and I love the facial expressions. Totally stays true to like what comic book art is, you know? Like, look at all that. That's really cool, man. Love this book. Got to go back and read the original volume. All right, next we got Wasteland's Hawkeye issue one. So this one finally came out. Really looking forward to this. It looks like he's teaming up to, with Stick, who was obviously the former Hawkeye, and, uh, you know, is helping him train his senses. You want to see something cool? Old man juggernaut. <laughs> Oh my God, dude, that's so awesome. Old man juggernaut. Next, we have Venom issue three. I don't know, man. I'm a little disappointed, a little bit down on Venom right now. We're going to see how this story continues. Uh, Dylan got picked up by a female by the name of Archer, supposed to help him out. Looks like we're dealing with some back history here. And I feel like this story is going to be a really slow burn type of story. So here's some of the interior artwork in here. So we'll see where Venom goes. Uh, I'm, I'm not digging it as much as uh, Donny Cates run, but we'll see. Next, Radiant Black. This is issue 11. Such a great, great story. Last issue was like that black light issue where Marshall rescued Nathan. He's being brought back. And is he going to take over the Radiant Black mantle once again? Here's some of the interior artwork. This is just like a modern day Power Rangers type of story, but it has a lot more emotion emotion to it. So, so good, man. Love this story by Kyle Higgins. Just a must read, right? All right, next. Uh, how do you guys are feeling about Moon Knight at this point with issue six? I think issue four was the best issue with Tigra, and I feel like Moon Knight definitely needs a supporting character like Tigra in here to make that book actually special like next level but i think jed mckay is doing a great job i love the artwork in this book very mysterious type of book you know spooky like interesting story looking forward to seeing how that story continues next we have issue five i think this is the last issue of this before we get to that timeless event this is kane the conqueror issue five as he's doing battle against his girlfriend or what he thought is his girlfriend and this has been the whole driving force of him trying to correct his younger self because he said don't fall in love with a girl and then what does he do he falls in love with a girl and it creates this whole thing all over again of where you know we ended up with all right next on the list we have catwoman issue 38 not sure why i was on my pull list anymore i think we're getting Maybe it's the conclusion to Ron V's little run there because I started pulling it. Or maybe it was because I wanted a variant cover and maybe they didn't have it. So they wound up throwing it in my box. But pretty cool artwork in here. I love the colors, right? Very neon-like, I guess. High energy. Pretty cool. I don't know. I don't have anything really to say about Catwoman. But next we go on to some of the independents and we have House's Slaughter. This is issue three. So we got that going on. Uh, cool story about learning about Aaron and uh, his boyfriend, I guess, Jace, and how he got initiated to the House of Slaughter. Um, and then we get to see a little bit of Erica Slaughter in this series as well. 
uh, panel here, panel there about that. But it's really a story about Aaron and kind of like his journey and some of the trials and tribulations that he has gone through while he's been in the house. So really good book. Is it as solid as something is killing the children? No, but it definitely does expand the universe. All right, next, Gunslinger Spawn, issue three. New character? Like, I did not even know this was a thing going on. It's so, here, here she is, right there. So yeah, what's going on there, man? Wonder who she is. Yep, yep, she's making her appearance right there. So yeah, totally excited about that. And here we have Gunslinger there. This has been a phenomenal read. And uh, it's been entertaining. Brett Boost's artwork is really well done. So just a good, good book altogether. So that's Gunslinger Spawn. This is issue three. And real quick, guys, I just want to give a, a quick shout out to all my face group page members out there. Guys, thank you so much for creating such a wonderful community. Happy holidays to you. Also, happy holidays to all the viewers out there. Um, can't do this channel without you guys. Can't run Facebook group page without you guys. But if you want to join it, just go ahead onto my Facebook group page. It's called Comic Book Corner 2.0 Web Hedge Unite. Just go ahead. I'll approve you. And then you can become part of the community. And you can be shouted out in future Halls and this guy that was right next to me, he's tripping me out right now. He needs to go away. <laughs> All right, anyway, next book we have is Hawkeye. This is issue two. First issue was kind of okay for me, it wasn't like the best, um, but yeah, it was it was pretty cool. So, here's some of the interior artwork in here, okay? So, I think it will probably pick up. She goes to this weird chateau. Her sister kind of called her and she didn't know it was her sister. And her sister wanted to hire for her job. So you get to see Kate Bishop's sister. Um, yeah, it was okay. So we'll see what issue two has to bring to the table. All right, next. I've been waiting for this book for a long time. This is Darkhold Spider-Man. This is issue one. Uh, this book has been... This Darkhold series, I think you pick up for the particular characters. Do you like Wasp? Yeah, pick it up. If you like Iron Man, pick it up. This one has to do with Spider-Man, and he goes, like, insane in this book uh, because he reads the Darkhold. And I want to see what he does, you know, to drive people mad. Some crazy artwork in there. You got Dr. Reed Richards that's kind of freaking out. Look at Peter there. <laughs> what is he turning into? Werewolf Man? I don't know, man. Cool stuff. Looking forward to that one. All right, next. Avengers Forever issue one. I might regret this. I might totally regret this. I'm just going to check it out to see what this story is about. I don't even know. Jason Aaron's behind this whole thing. Here's the interior artwork. I just feel like I need to read Avengers. They're a flagship team. Their story should be good, right? So I'm always going to give it a benefit of the doubt when, you know, a new story arc happens. That's a pretty cool image, though, right there with Thor's hammer. So I don't know. We'll see. All right, and then I wound up getting issue 51. So this is called The Death Hunters Part 1. This is another new story arc, still written by Jason Aaron. And here is some of the interior artwork for this one. So I don't know, man. Avengers is kicking off all these new story arcs, these new events, and all this crazy stuff that's happening. So it's like I feel like this is the perfect jumping on point. Now whether, again, I get attracted to these stories or not is a completely different thing. All right, next issue of The Amazing Spider-Man. This is issue 82. Something's happening in the hospital with Peter Parker and Mary Jane, and they're supposed to do something together. This could be a fun little story. Nothing has been really progressing the story when it's come to Amazing Spider-Man. It's been a little bit disappointing. So I'm a little bit frustrated with it, to say the least, right? So here's some right here some artwork which right away it's not my favorite artwork right off the start so i i don't know man but i think issue 83 is going to be a patrick gleason issue and i think that's going to be the best one he writes it and he also does the artwork and then next we have chicken devil this is issue three love this story man it's so freaking good with this guy that owns these chicken restaurants and his partner basically betrays him and uh 
bad things happen to this poor guy. He loses his family, loses his partner, and it's just this high energy. It's like a Breaking Bad comic book. It's so cool, man. This guy has totally lost everything. So, so insane. But here's some of the artwork in here. Definitely a recommend read if you have not gotten it. So, there you guys have it. One more time, I'm going to show it. My Amazing Spider-Man issue 17. So happy to have it. One of my prestige issues now, or my favorite issues that I own in the series besides issue 300. But there is the haul, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Once again, happy holidays. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell. More content right here to click on, guys. And of course, guys, Keep buying, keep collecting, and most importantly, always read your comics. Until next time, guys, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.